Hey, this is Manuel with Intagma, and here I am with a new Geometry Nodes tutorial. The development of Geometry Nodes does not stop, and so they added a new feature to Geometry Nodes and to Blender with one of the latest builds, and that is the support for vertex normals. Long awaited. Now that it is here, I thought, take it and build a little setup around it. So let's try to build this alien vertex normal space blob inside of Blender using Geometry Nodes. This setup is a little bit more complicated than usual because it relies on three levels of geometry nodes. So we will have one object featuring geometry nodes that feeds into the next object with geometry nodes and a third object with geometry nodes. And the three objects combined give this little effect. So let's dive in and start building. Before we start, let's have a look at the Blender version. That is the version that I am currently using. And make sure to use at least this version or a later one. I think that is the first one that supports vertex normals. Now, let's start. Delete the default cube. Instead, go and add an icosphere. Let's up the resolution to five. That will be our base object. This surface will be used to distribute the points. So double click the object and call it zero one. It's the first step and call it base. Let's get ourselves a new editor and switch it to be a geometry node editor. We need a new node graph and call the node graph base2. The very first step now is to distribute points on this surface. So let's get a point, point distribute node and connect it here. It starts to be random. I don't want it to be that random. So let's switch over to Poisson disk and let's up the density to say 50. Now it's far too dense. So use the distance slider to get less points, but this time evenly distributed. That is what I want to work with. To animate these procedurally, I need the current frame as a variable inside my geometry nodes network. And there is currently no node outputting the frame. So we have to use a workaround. Create a utilities math node, switch it to multiply. We need this later. I just create it to be able to drag this to this hollow port here. And that creates a new port on my group input. It can be found here and you can rename it to frame. You don't have to rename it to frame. It's just for clarity. That creates a new value here on my modifier called frame. I can use a driver to drive this value procedurally. So click here and type hash and then frame. That automatically creates a driver. That's why it turns purple. If you now scrub the timeline, you see this value is updating with the current frame and this is piped into the geometry nodes network. So now we have the current frame inside of geometry nodes. Let's create a new math node, attribute math. And let's switch it to sign because I want to calculate the sign of the current frame. Switch this one here to float, connect the frame connect the geometry to this node and the output to the output geometry. Let's call the result sign. Now we have a sign, but we do not have any movement yet. See, that means we have to use this sign to scale a displacement vector. And this displacement vector is our vertex normal. So let's create a new attribute vector math in this case, because we are dealing with a vector. The vertex normal is a vector. Switch it to multiply because we want to scale the vertex normal. Click here, switch this to be vertex normal. The second attribute B should be sign. And the result goes into a new attribute called disp for displacement. Now we have a vector that is modulated by the sign. The last step is to add this vector to the current position of the points to make them move. Duplicate this attribute vector math by pressing shift D, change the attributes. Now I want to start with position. I want to add to the position and I want to add our disp vector. And all of this goes into position again. See, the position changed. And now if I move the timeline, you see that I have a little procedural animation. Of course, these points do the full range of animation. It's too much for my taste. So let's multiply the sign down a little. In front of these two attribute vector masses, let's create a standard attribute math to just deal with the scale of the sign and switch it over to multiply. We want to start with a sign. To multiply it by a float, switch B to float and type 0.5 here, and this goes into sign. 
you see that the movement is not that extreme anymore. Okay, that's nice, but everything is moving together. And I would like to have a little offset for the individual points. Well, we could use a random value for the individual points. For this, create an attribute randomize node and put it at the very beginning of our graph. Let's create a new attribute called rnd for a random. It should probably go in a range between zero and three. And now we can add this random value to the incoming frame number to create an individual time for each of these points. Create a new attribute math node, put it here directly after the attribute randomize. And I want to use the R and D variable, the random. The second one I will switch to float and I will connect the frame to this B here. And now this frame number will be added to the random and the random will be between zero and three. That means we have an offset of maximum three frames for the individual points. The result of this operation goes to a new attribute called frame. Let's add it, frame. And instead of using the frame directly here on the attribute math, let's instead switch this back to be an attribute. Click here and use frame instead. And now let's see what happens. And you see now we have a nice little offset for our animation. That is our base layer. But at the moment it's very static. The points are only wobbling around. Would be nice if they do a little more. So why not rotate them? So let's go to the very end here. Add a transform node. And let's make use of the rotation part of this transform node. You see that the rotation part is a vector. So we have to create a vector for the rotation. For this, we'll need a vector combine X, Y, Z. There it is. Let's connect this to the rotation. Now we can dial in the rotation along the axis. We set this to zero. We don't want to put these numbers in manually. Instead, we want to use the incoming frame to drive these values. If we just connect the frame to one of these values, everything goes insane because it's now rotating very fast. So instead of using an F curve, we can use a range map. So let's go to utilities, map range. Let's connect the incoming frame to the value of this map range. And now we can remap the incoming time. I am planning on doing a 300 frame animation. So let's say from zero to maximum 300 will be transformed to a value between zero. And eventually I want the entire thing to rotate once over the course of 300 frames. But this rotation part here is using radians. So a full rotation will be two pi. So type two times pi here. This will be calculated and results in 6.283. That is a full rotation in radians. So let's connect this to X and let's see what happens if we press play. And you see now the points are wobbling and at the same time, they are rotating slowly. Still not interesting enough, so let's duplicate this range map node. Let's connect the frame again. This time we connect the output to the Z rotation. And I don't want to have exactly the same speed of rotation, so instead of going from zero to 300, I would go from zero to 150 and make sure to tick off clamp, otherwise it just stops at 150. Let's see what we have here. And you see now we have a nice organic animation of wobbling points. It's still a little fast if you ask me, but fortunately we can change that by just changing the value here to 0 0.05, say. Now let's have a look. And that is better. Now it's slow and beautiful. The next step is to replace these dots, these points, with actual objects. I could, in theory, just put a point instance node directly into this graph. But that has a downside, because I want to use these points later inside of a second graph to drive the animation of the sphere. For this, I need individual points and not objects. That is why I do the instancing in a different object. Just create a new, say, plane. It really doesn't matter because the geometry will be overridden. And let's create a new geometry nodes graph. Let's call this instance. Let's call the object 02 instance. And let's build a instancing setup. For that, we will need an instance object. So let's create another mesh icosphere. This will be the instance like so. Switch into edit mode and scale this down quite a bit. And now switch back to our 02 instance. I need these points that are created in this base object. So let's create an input object info. 
Let's select the base object. The points are incoming over this geometry port here. I can now create a point instance, connect it to this geometry and connect the output to this geometry. The plane immediately vanishes, but as soon as I now select our the instance object for the instance, the geometry is replaced with these instances. And now we have a beautiful animation of not points wobbling around, but spheres wobbling around. To create the third and last part of this effect, let's create a new icosphere. Icosphere. It needs quite some resolution, so I'll go up to 7 with the subdivisions, because we want to displace it, and for that we need a lot of points. Let's rename it to 03, third part of the effect, displace. Give it a new node graph, and call this displace2, to keep everything organized. And now we need the base points to drive the effect, so let's create an input, object info and bring in the base points. I plan on creating a distance function on the surface of this sphere. So let's create an attribute proximity node. First switch it over to points, because the targets are points, and now connect these base points to target and the geometry of the sphere to geometry. I want to create a float function, so put an attribute next to distance and call it dist, and connect it up to the geometry output. At the moment we don't see anything, so let's use the same trick as in old tutorials, create an attribute color ramp, connect it here, and remap the dist to a new attribute called col. To visualize this, go to the object data properties, open vertex colors, create a new vertex color layer. It is called col by default, and because this attribute and this layer here have the same name, this data gets written to this layer. To see it in the viewport, we have to switch over to vertex here, and you see now we have this distance function. And it updates, because everything is procedural. But we don't want these reptile skin-nesque regions here on the surface, instead we want little circles around the spheres, and for that we can use the attribute color ramp. And if you just move over this white spot here, you limit the area of influence and get these circles. Now let's use this for displacement. We shouldn't use the color directly for displacement, because color is a vector. We want a single value to scale the displacement vector. So let's use an attribute separate xyz to separate this color vector into its components. So color, and let's call the components val x for value x, val y, and you guessed it, val z. We only will use val x though. And now for displacement, you know by now how this goes. We need an attribute vector math. Switch it to multiply, and we want to use a base displacement vector. In this case, it is the vertex normal of the sphere, because we want to displace it along the normals. We multiply by this value here, val x, and the result goes into a new displacement vector called disp. And now we want to use this displacement vector, so duplicate this node, switch it over to add, we start with the position of the points, we add the displacement vector to the position, and everything goes into position again. And here you have the displacement. But we have a problem. At the moment the object doubled in size. Because, remember, we use this node here for the value dist, and the value dist is driving the displacement. That means the value dist is going between 0 and 1, because Black means a vector of 0, 0, 0, and white means a vector of 1, 1, 1. The displacement starts at the surface and then goes outwards one unit. What we want instead is a value range between minus 1 and 1. And because we don't have a range map attribute node yet, we have to do it manually. So let's create a new attribute math and put it here between the attribute separate and the displacement nodes. Let's move these over to the right. First, let's transform the range 0 to 1 to the range 0 to 2 by just multiplying by a float, and this float is 2. We want to multiply val x, and let's just write the result to val x. We just exaggerated the effect. But now we duplicate this node, switch it to subtract, and subtract 1 from it. We have now a range between minus 1 and 1, so the displacement goes inside and outside. Still, it is very, very, very pronounced, but now we can change that by just using the colors of this attribute color ramp. If you go here to this color, you see it has a value of 1, and if we go down with this value to 0 
we have no change anymore. Now it is only displacing to the inside. That is what we want. It's just that this is not necessarily that interesting. It would be nice if these little craters here would have a little rim around them. We can perfectly do this by just introducing a new stop here into this gradient, like so, say, a little further outwards, like so, then switch these around, and you see, you have the total freedom of designing your displacement effect. To make this look a little bit more pretty, let's switch the interpolation from linear to ease. That gives more roundish results, shade everything smooth. That is quite interesting, because now these little spheres here make the craters form and open, and if the spheres are exactly on the surface, the crater is the widest, and then it just eats this little sphere, which looks funny. <laughs> Okay, so finally, the only thing that is left to do is to make this color that we have on the surface a little bit more interesting. We can do that by just duplicating this color ramp node and putting it at the very, very end, overriding the color with something else. So we have the distance function here again, and we want to override it with something that we can use for shading. And for that, I will get rid of this one and Make this one white again, like so. And by moving these knots, you can decide from where to where it goes. And now we have a nice gradient that starts with black at the very, very center, deep inside of the displacement, and then goes to white, and the surface itself is white. And that can be used for creating a shader later on. Switch over to the shader editor. With the 03 displace object selected, create a new shader. And let's switch over to look def. We want to use the vertex color that we wrote onto the object to develop a shader. That means we need a color ramp. So create a color ramp to remap these colors. We need a vertex color node to read the vertex color. The colors we want to read are called call. So we can use these vertex colors to drive this color ramp and the color ramp goes to the base color of our shader. And here is our vertex color again. But now we have the freedom to define colors as we like. So because we have this gradient here on the surface, we can now use the color ramp to design a nice shader. So let's go for a nice dark red here. Let's add a few stops to this gradient. Let's use some vibrant colors, like an orange here, and maybe a pink here nice pink and another orange. You're totally free to pick whatever you like, of course. And maybe let's use a blue for here, like so. And now you have a nice remapping of these colors and you defined a nice color scheme for your sphere. And there you have it, a nice alien blob effect. If you like what we are doing, please consider becoming a Patreon for supporting us and for access to more in-depth courses on topics like volume techniques or PDG or Vellum and more. To everybody who is already supporting us, thank you so much. Without your continuous support, Entangma would not be possible.